is James Arnold Taylor, voice of Obi-Wan Kenobi. Welcome to a more civilized podcast. This is the podcast you're looking for. You may not go about your business. Stay here, listen, and then move along. Welcome, listeners, to this week's episode of A More Civilized Podcast. I'm Kyler. I'm Chris. I'm Ross. Hey, we sure are. So we have a lot to get to today and limited time because Ross has a bedtime. Yes, I really, so, <laughs> he gets early, he gets like, cranky if he's up past his bedtime. Yeah, we that's have like true. a toddler bedtime. In all honesty, <laughs> yeah. you're so going to bed earlier than my wife. That's like, true. That's, yeah, Ross's work is. What time do you work? Early. Well, work starts at six. Huh. I have. But to drive, you do. You have a commute. Yeah. I have to drive an hour to get there, and I hate being in any sort of rush in the morning, so I give myself that's a solid fair. hour to get. Ready, I was going to say because my wife works at four thirty, and yeah. Even yeah. she doesn't go to bed that early. Yeah. So anyway, we are going <laughs> hey, to... Hey, remember how we said we weren't going to do yep, tangents? Yep, exactly. Yeah, no. <laughs> no tangents today, for Ross's uh, sake. So, there is no news today of any sort. But I would like to add one note for the listener. Okay. So, this episode is a little bit listener. of an experiment. Uh, yes. Uh, for our faithful listeners. There we go. Yeah. Uh, so, because of my limited time schedule, because we were totally unprepared for some reason for D23. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> the episodes, the next two episodes you're going to hear have already been recorded. So, the news in those is already outdated a little. Some of them. Yeah. One in particular. Yeah. Just listen to it to enjoy us arguing about things. Uh-huh. Yeah. Um, also, I'm not going to have as much time to edit, so I'm really only going over this episode very lightly, so you guys are going to have to let us know what you think of the sound. There are some things I normally do to make it a little bit more pleasant. I'm not going to tell you what those are, so you can tell me what the problems are. For instance, normally, if I did something like this, <laughs> he would remove that, but now he might not have time. <laughs> or put it at the end, which is what I would normally do. <laughs> yes, yes. We'll see what happens. <laughs> we'll see. So we are going to do our darndest to stay on topic yes. and on and, task today. And so, so comment stay on, on Facebook. Comment on yes. Facebook. At me directly on Twitter. Whatever you want to do. Just let me know what you think. So that This may be an instructive episode as to what it usually is like here yes. in, <laughs> yeah. re- in yeah. recording the, the studio. The shenanigans Ross. that go on behind the scenes. Yeah. So yeah, no news today because this entire episode is going to be nothing but news and us talking about it. Because D23, Disney's big expo for the year where they talk about here's everything that you can look forward to in the next and or coming years. Uh, just happened this last weekend. And, and it turns out Star Wars <laughs> is owned by Disney, guys. Yeah, which <laughs> means we have a buttload of cool Star Wars news to talk about. So we're going to get right into it with the least impressive piece of news. Um, Disney World, Orlando, uh, which is in Orlando, yes. um, they are getting their own version of Galaxy's Edge, their own oh. sort of Star Wars land in Disney oh, World. That's cool. Um, and the they're getting a big ship called the Halcyon. Um which is like a hotel slash adventure thing, kind of huh. like Galaxy's Edge. So you're going to like be passengers that board this ship or oh, something. Oh, is that what all that was yeah. about? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. But it does give us a new ship that is in canon. It's a Corellian MP0 or MPO 1400 Star Cruiser operated by uh, Chandrilla Starline. Huh. My favorite part of all of this news was how confused people got. Yes. Because they were, they were, yes. so many outlets were saying, oh, it's a new cruise. There's a new cruise yeah. that, you're, that Star Wars nope, themed. Nope, it's a building that looks like a ship that you get to go play <laughs> in. And that was, that was the other thing. Is, yeah, they had the picture of the ship, and they're like, and here it is. Here's the boat. And it's like, that's, that's, not, that's a, not a that's boat. boat. Yeah, that's, you've that's, seen boats before, so, right, people? Yeah, yeah it's ridiculous. Like, <laughs> unless this is going to be the most awesome cruise ever. Which, true. if it were a boat, it would absolutely yes, be the would, most yeah. awesome cruise ever, but it's not. Well, I meant it would be a space cruise. And that would be that awesome. would be even cooler than what I had in mind. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so there's that. So if you want to go to Florida for some reason, uh, you can <laughs> go there. Well, this is the reason now. Yeah, this is the reason to go to Florida, yeah. or for like uh, Florida man spottings. But mm-hmm. you know, there's yeah. that too. Zombie outbreak. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So next, uh, Obi Wan Kenobi miniseries for Disney Plus. So this is the news item that Ross is referring to. I think it's next week's episode where we're like, "This is probably going to happen. We just have to wait for Disney to make it official, and yeah. we'll tell you when it does." Turns out we time traveled back a week <laughs> to yeah. tell you that it did. <laughs> so yeah, Chris, what are your thoughts on an Obi Wan? Oh, 
uh, before you do that, um, <laughs> all the scripts have been written for the miniseries. Production begins next year in 2020. Oh, really? Yeah. Because yep. apparently that. there was a movie slated. Um, yes. But and they then solo tanked. Yeah. When they, they when they pulled. backed off of the movies, they took the script, retooled it for a series. Yep. And are now so they're publishing it that way. Um, and Kyler's notes are good. Chris is chagrined, disappointed. Ross is probably okay with this. I am. <laughs> I am. I'm very much. Because I think Ewan McGregor deserved better. I can't argue with that. So. <laughs> he definitely deserved better. I hope that... I mean... The time period is exactly what we thought it would be. Mm-hmm. Which is, he's a hermit. Yeah. So... According to the official timeline that they released at D23, this takes place... Seven years? After Han left... Corellia, yeah, but before the rest of that movie took yeah. place, so it's it's I believe seven years they said after um, episode yeah. three, yeah. yeah. So it's right uh, a little bit before Rebels starts, mm-hmm. right in the middle of Han Solo. Um, See, I wouldn't disagree that you and McGregor deserved better. I'm just not convinced this will be it. And that's, that's what I thought Chris would say. Yeah. Because I don't think anybody can argue the fact that he deserved better. Like, yeah. he for reals did. He was, like, one of the few good things of the yeah. prequels. It's what I said last good. time we discussed this. It's mainly just for me that it's like, there's there's not a lot of stories that I want to hear that are going to take place there. It's like, oh, this is the story of that one time that Luke secretly got kidnapped and Obi-Wan had to go save him. And Luke discovered that he could use the Force but then conveniently forgot so that we're not violating the timeline in any way. It's like, <laughs> these, these, yeah. so, these sort of stories are almost universally all always dumb yeah the things that they could do to make them better would basically be retreads of stuff they've already done with Satine in the Clone Wars etc etc it's like oh this is the story of how Obi-Wan went off and faced a great nemesis and defeated him once and for all even though he thought he was dead but oh wait no he already did that yeah we did that in Rebels um hmm. I was going to do that in Rebels because yeah we are going to have right. been yeah. we are going to have yeah. done that in Rebels and you know and it's just like yeah. oh yeah you know it's like how many means Obi-Wan went and was a hermit for 30 years, except for all the awesome adventures he had the whole time. And I'm like, oh, it's just, it's so dumb. <laughs> yeah, it's so, so dumb. my thoughts on this are, yay, getting to see Ewan McGregor be Obi-Wan. Sure. Yeah, mm-hmm. not even that. It, it's going that. to, it's going to look good. I mean, it's got yeah, Disney it's, and Star Wars money behind it, both. So yeah, yeah. looking good will not be a problem. I, it has not been for Disney at all <laughs> at any yeah. point. It will not begin to yeah, be. Yeah, exactly. But kind of like Chris, I'm going, I... I mean, obviously, I'm hoping for a good story. Yeah, but I'm um, honestly it is kind of problematic. Like, what are they going to do if yeah. they had so. just done a movie? I might be less trepidatious about it because it's like, okay, movie. That's a short story. You can do something quick, self-contained, just but a nice, we're simple getting, thing. I like but a now six episodes. A, it was yeah, six or eight. eight. Yeah. Oh, eight. eight. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And so, and I'm just like that. That level of content involved that needs a lot more involved a storyline, yeah, yeah. and I just uh, and even if the episodes are only like an hour, that's still you know eight yeah, hours yeah. of material. Yeah. That's you know. So we'll see. I mean, we'll see. You know, yeah. I'm not going to deny that it's totally possible that they could come up with a storyline that I can't think of there that wouldn't I be idiotic. I would so. like to see the the crate or cryat, whatever it is, cryat dragon. dragons. Mm-hmm. I would like to see one of those alive instead yeah. of just the skeleton that we see in episode four. Like, it doesn't even have to be story related. I just want to see one because <laughs> that would be really cool to see. But, uh, you know, I, I don't know. I'm, yeah. I'm willing to give it a chance because, well, it's Star Wars. Let's be real here. I'm going to watch it. But yeah. I just I hope it's good. Probably my guess as to what will happen is that it's not going to happen on Tatooine. Which is a little bit well, of a problem. Well, see, and that's obviously what's going to happen is it's going to, he's going to discover, he's going to get discovered by the Empire and have to hunt down the agents that's trying to tell the others, but for some reason his communications have conveniently been jammed, and so he has to travel to find them, and Obi-Wan will shoot him down on the planet Jakku, and then it will chase him down and defeat him, but along the way he'll fall in love with a wonderful woman, and then he'll invite her to come back to Tatooine and live with him, but she'll say, no, no, I want to stay here and go into my family business of junk, tra- of drunken junk trading. Oh, stop it. <laughs> No, don't. Chris, yeah, stop it. Stop. I, I am half convinced that a good quarter of the people who want this to happen want it to happen for oh, that reason yeah. because they, they, they delusionally think yeah. that that is something that any tasteful storyteller would not. do. Yeah. No, but see, so, because there's not a lot going on in Tatooine. For a, a dusty yes. ball in the middle of nowhere, lots of pivotal things start there. I could see them 
pulling on the element of like he's still a Jedi, yeah, and so he still has this commitment to the light yeah. and helping people, and so like there's some crisis nearby that he's like. Do I stay and protect Luke? Do I go help with this crisis? Eh, okay, I'm gonna go because I then he goes gone to too help long. with the crisis, and someone notices him and goes, "Whoa, why is that dude <clears throat> dressed as a Jedi?" Mm-hmm. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> <What's with this laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, or the other thing that I had, uh, that, that sort of my guess is that, again, to pull him off of Tatooine, just because it's gonna be real. They're boring. gonna have like to. we've done about everything you can do on Tatooine at yeah. this point, you know. I mean, um, we've been more on talk to him than we should have been, <laughs> for real yeah, yeah that's true so. yeah but I thought maybe like if Imperial agents are getting close and so he goes to a nearby planet specifically as a Jedi to be like look over here and then they go and he you know fights them over there to draw their attention away or I don't know yeah so but that's oh and you know what because they also really can't even have him meet up with the rebellion correct because otherwise he would already be involved by episode four well and and because it would invalidate what leia says about years ago you served my father in the clone wars right but if they've seen him since then why wouldn't she talk about that yeah you know exactly so not that can't... rogue one was necessarily concerned with that so they might not be but <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah. no what i really want from this i want him to have to go undercover in some sort of noble situation where a young woman named elizabeth gets really irritated by how proud and arrogant this Mr. <laughs> Kenosi is. And, uh, but oh, gradually she, no, they learn to, she, he learns to see past his own pride and she, and she learns to see past her own prejudice and they stop fall it. in love. Stop it. Right That's now. what I want. <laughs> you stop it. You're going to give Kelsey ideas. <laughs> I just want some pride and prejudice in space. That's all. Oh boy. Mm-hmm. Okay. Are we ready to move on? Yes. <laughs> okay, yeah, I great. Think we've said more than should have been said about this. <laughs> kind of like our time on Tatooine. Yes. So, uh, the Mandalorian trailer. That was the big thing everybody was expecting and hoping for, and then we kind of got more than that. Um, but yeah, the Mandalorian trailer. So, Ross, do you want to read my notes? <laughs> uh, yeah, sure. Uh, first point. Chris thinks nothing new happened. Kyler is overjoyed at all the tidbits for hardcore fans. Namely, Blurgs from Ryloth. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Which are okay, the... so the trailer, right, is... I Well, let's talk about the trailer in general, then I'll get to all the mm-hmm. tidbits. But, yeah, so what, what did we think? Ross, what did you think of the oh, trailer? Oh, I was very, very, very much enjoyed it. Uh, loved the aesthetic. The... Uh, JJ's films, well, and the sequel trilogy has been very bright. This was quite a bit darker, yeah, just overall true. tone. Starting off with uh, the Oh, grim... I was thinking just visually. Well, yeah, it's that's... not as bright. Everything yes. is more muted. Mm-hmm. And... Yeah, the the yeah. shadows are a lot darker. They're yeah, a lot, they they're more prominent in any scene. But even also, you start off with a bunch of grim stormtrooper totems. You know, stormtrooper helmets on pikes <laughs> and a bunch of them. Um, yeah, it was. I just thought, I'm I'm excited to see a darker tone for the Star Wars universe. Mm-hmm. So, Chris, what were your thoughts? I was. I mean, I wasn't displeased, but neither was I impressed. I was just sort of like, you didn't give me anything of any significance there. It's like, if this was, like, I compared it to, I was thinking, it's like, okay, I'm, I've helped a lot of authors write, like, back cover copy, marketing copy for their books, and and often you have to instruct them in, like, what works and what doesn't, how you're supposed to do this. And and it's like, the one of the main things is like, all right, you need to, you need to hit a few, few important things, usually, in in writing marketing copy and it's generally like okay who's your protagonist what's the main at least the basics of some sort of main conflict you don't necessarily have to show a villain but that could be helpful this side or the other and this is just like no information whatsoever there's nothing about story and as any frequent listeners know that's all i care about like Mm -hmm. i don't give a damn about anything else and so i watched this and was like you didn't give me anything new like i don't i do not know more about this story than i did before in fact i may actually know less somehow (laughs) Magically. If this, this is the question I wanted to ask you. If this had been your first oh, view yeah. of them, uh, you know, because we we saw sort of the behind the scenes one interspersed with footage from uh, Star Wars Celebration. Yeah. yeah. If so this if had been my yeah. first glimpse, I wouldn't have been displeased. Like for a first okay. glimpse, it would have been like, okay, here's some tone, here's this and that. But I was like, I'm already like, it shows him landing and going into this city. I'm like, I've already seen this city. I've already seen this in stills. I've seen this in in footage. I've already seen him talking to Carl Weathers. I have already seen him talking to Werner Herzog. Um, and so I was just going Let's through. Let's be and real, though. Like, 
Herzog's accent though was great. Yeah, that oh, was. It's just. I, I did have a moment where I was listening to that, and I was like, "Oh, it's nice for, to see them just going like, you know what? Have we been too subtle about having the empire with? Uh, have we been too subtle with giving them all British accents? Like, let's just go straight German now. Yeah, you know, let's just let's not even pretend." Um, I'm I am floored that they got Werner Herzog to be in their Star Wars show. Like, holy crap, the man's a legend, and that's wow. Um, and uh, as I was watching it, when I I did have a moment where one of the most pleasing moments for it, me as I was going through was like, okay, da da da. Oh sure, new stormtroopers because I'm pretty sure at this point Disney just mandates that everything in everything that gets made in, have some sort of new stormtrooper. Uh, for were only, there new ones? No, the ones that were the, it showed them all lining up to shoot. Those, uh, those are death, death troopers. troopers. Oh, those are death troopers yeah, again. Yeah, yep. yeah. yeah, shows how important those were to that movie. <laughs> Or that you just don't like the movies he didn't. No, pay no, attention. but that, that's the thing is, Rogue One was my main example of just like is like, yeah, we're gonna shove new stormtroopers into this, even though there's no reason for these people to exist or for there to be stormtroopers we haven't seen when this takes place five minutes before, before uh, episode four. Like, but sure, there's just conveniently some stormtroopers we've never seen because Disney mandates that, and. And that's the kind of how I was like, I feel like with Last Jedi, it was just like, no, you have to do this. And Ryan Johnson was just like, whatever, who cares? Fine, here, just the executioners can have different armor, whatever. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, that is the appropriate, that is the appropriate response to this. Like, who cares? Yeah. But so I thought they were new. My bad. My bad there. But, but then it cuts from them and it shows Giancarlo Esposito there. And I was like, is that Giancarlo Esposito? Ooh, is that? Yeah, that is. I forgot he was a part. Of- okay, mm-hmm. well, that's awesome. As long as he's not playing Fuss Green, an imperial uh, imperial officer who it turns so out was he, moonlighting as a I space hope- meth, space meth dealer. <laughs> <laughs> well, did you see uh, Revolution when it was on TV year, a couple years ago? No, he was he was the uh, not really the main bad guy, but he was a, a big bad guy in mm-hmm. that one. Wonderful performance. Oh yeah, he's Loved amazing. It. I love him. Um, he's one of the he's one of the most significant antagonists in Breaking Bad. Yeah, that's and well, but that's one thing I'm really looking forward to in the Mandalorian. You look at that cast, and it's like, yeah, it's you true. got some strong acting chops in this series. The reason why I bring up Revolution is because his position in that whole scheme was he was like the number one enforcer, and so it was always just just really getting in and. And really, really poking at the protagonist. I'm hoping he plays a very similar thing here. Because he he's currently so, listed so well. on IMDb as being in one episode, so I don't know. But IMDb also had everyone except for the top two. Yeah, so it may not be accurate. Episode, so, so I, did I think that was that. Uh, it was just whoever was. It could be. Well, saying. you're in the trailer, so yeah. we know you're in at least one episode. Yeah. So yep. we're gonna throw that in. Yeah. Yeah. But that is uh, possible. no, I I thought the trailer was really cool. It made me even more excited for the show. Mm. Um, especially uh, hearing uh, Werner Herzog speak, I'm just like, you just sound really cool and menacing, and I I want to hear you talk more. Again, like Chris, you said, uh, you know, we don't hear too many German accents, straight up German accents in the show, so I'm excited yeah. to hear more of that. For me, it's like everything in the episode. It's like there's a good thing, but then it was usually balanced by something that was less good for me. Where I was like with the stormtroopers, where I was like, um, it turns out that was not as founded. So hey, that upsets One thing- slightly. But one thing that I thought was particularly cool, just new terrain, the big like caked mud field that but it's like giant yeah, size. Massive. I was watching yeah. that and I was like, oh, he got shrunk down. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I thought that's a really interesting it's, way it's a, to, it's to a do fantastic it. You know, I was thinking Mandalorian outside voyage. of that's kind of thinking outside the box as far as what's this hmm. terrain gonna look like, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. Um, and we had it, more of a, a volcanic not a, a dead volcanic planet mm-hmm. walking in as well. Yeah. The initial shot of his ship flying had me going, oh, well, I'm impressed that you got half a firefly up in the air. That's, uh, <laughs> it does kind of have a firefly vibe. Oh, no, vibe. it's it's yeah. literally, like, that is not a kind of a firefly vibe. That is, we are deliberately evoking firefly here, which was the, the balance there for me where I was like, okay, um, you're deliberately evoking firefly is kind of an homage or sla- slash kind of like setting up tone sort of thing here. But that's another thing that I often have to deal with when I when mm-hmm. I've been talking to authors and everything is just like trying to find gentle ways to tell the people whose books I'm editing. And it's just like, yeah, this is a reference here to this, and it's like, yeah, yeah, I did that as kind of an homage to this thing. No, no, I know, I got that. Um, <laughs> you don't want people to be thinking of that right now. 
you you don't want to remind them that there are significantly better things out there. <laughs> <laughs> and so and so I watched this and I was like, okay, well, they're confident if they're making that reference there, right? Just putting that right prominent smack in the middle. I we'll see how hope they out. can back that up because <laughs> yeah. that's a pretty high bar to be setting me at. So, but what would you have them change? Just a different shaped ship? Well, yeah, just not deliberately evoke. Like, cause that's, that is very much like, here's a smaller firefly. We've hacked off the butt and we've lowered the nose. Like, it's straight up a firefly. Which is funny because every time I see the ship, I keep thinking freelancer from Star Citizen. <laughs> oh, yeah, a little bit. So, it does have, kind of, mm. so um, for but, me, I, I think the ship is actually kind of boring looking. For a bounty hunter ship, like, it doesn't strike me as overly unique hmm. in any way. Like, because, like, think Slave 1. Mm -hmm. Like, that ship is one of a kind. You know what I mean? It is yeah. so just, like, who is driving that? They gotta be cool, you know? And you think about some of the other bounty hunters ships, you know? You think, I know, Ross, you hate the Houndstooth. But, I do hate the Houndstooth. <laughs> but I think it's way cool and really distinct, you know? And so it's like, they, I don't know, but they just, they feel like, well, even Han Solo, the Millennium Falcon, like, that is a unique looking ship. Hmm. But his ship is just like super vanilla nondescript. And so for me, it's not grabbing me. I'm, he is grabbing me, but his ship is not necessarily. But uh, See, and that's the thing for him is I'm just like, well, he's a Mandalorian. Like, I mean, I, I like the variations on the design that they've given me, but I literally know nothing about him. Yeah. I haven't even heard him talk yet. Yeah. So, or did he talk in the... No, he no, did he not. Yeah. We have not seen his face in film or no, we haven't any heard voice. his voice. Yeah. Which I'm just kind of like, okay, I mean, that's a choice. We'll but, see. But uh, I, well, I couldn't help but have Chris's voice ringing in my ear the entire time. <laughs> One of my favorite parts of the trailer is when he freaking, like, whipcords the guy, pulls him through the door, and he <laughs> cuts him in half door. with the door. Maybe. He cool. could just pin him. Oh, well, we don't know. Yeah, I don't know, that door looks kind of sharp. The cutaway <laughs> really implies what's yeah, going yeah. on. Yeah, yeah, right. And I had Chris in the back of my head. Kyler, do you want Star Wars to get dark? Do you want it to get an R rating for violence? Yeah. And I'm going, well, maybe. <laughs> See, well, you know, it, it maybe. cuts away, though. It cuts away. <laughs> so, but yeah, I just had Chris's chiding me in the, you know, it's like, is this really what you want, Kyler? Do you want to go down this path? And See, I'm my, just like, oh, but it's so cool. My reaction to that scene was, was like, yeah, I watched it and I was like, oh, that was dark. That was cool, though. Uh, are you, do, have we talked about the rule of cool on here? Do you guys know the rule of cool yeah, well, and like the rule of funny? That, yeah, where yeah. it's basically just like the the if something is cool enough, it doesn't actually have to make sense. Basically, yeah, the, yeah. the exactly. cooler it is, yeah. the more justified it is if it doesn't make sense. I watched it and I was like, well, that was cool, but was it cool enough to justify how pointlessly ridiculous it was? <laughs> like this guy literally just this guy's running away, so he whip cords him. T trips him up, then has to cut the whip cord in order to draw his gun, and, and instead of just yeah. shooting the guy, which would have made more sense in the first place, he shoots the door, <laughs> which then conveniently <laughs> happens to close in defiance of all logical safety measures <laughs> and kill the guy. Like Chris, I want you, I want to remind you that handrails do not exist in this universe. No, sure, there sure. are no safety and th there's regulations. Even, I, as I was thinking about it, I was like, no, there's even precedence for shooting door controls shutting those doors. Mm -hmm. Like, it happens right in episode four. <laughs> yeah. But but even so, I just had this moment of just like, that was, like, unless this is, like, literally him showing <laughs> off in this scene to be like, oh, oh, you want to see how good I am at killing people? Look at this convoluted thing I, that I can do just off the top of my head. Like, it's so I am, cool. I am like Rule Jack Sparrow, cool. <laughs> but instead of, but with killing people in intricate ways instead of elaborate escapes. I like, loved it. I didn't even care. And For so me, I was like, cool all the way on that Yeah, kill. see, and I was like, it's cool, but is it cool enough? I'm on the fence. Like, it obviously, it occurred to me on my very first watch through <laughs> that that was pointless so that's not a good sign but when i'm actually watching the show yeah I, I might be in a better place i might be like yeah okay that was pointless but cool i'm okay we're moving on i think i'm just sitting here thinking about both of this shot and kind of a couple of the shots we see later like the little mexican standoff they do yes. right at the mm -hmm. end yeah they're leaning a lot heavier into the western vibe yes. than what I had assumed on originally. Which well, because Favreau said at the beginning, Favreau yeah. said he that they this was going to be sort of a western Did feel to it. Oh, yeah. I didn't yeah. remember mm -hmm. that. But yeah, but with you then also talking about Wirefly, and that's what it was, was a space western. Mm -hmm. We're probably in for a few more. Which is fun, because Firefly basically came around because Joss Whedon was like, well, I wanted Han Solo to be the hero, so I'm going to do my own Star Wars. Yeah. Yep. 
and so now Mandalorian's Fair going, enough. well, we're going to do that, but we're going to actually do it in Star Wars. So I showed this to my dad, and when he cuts the guy in half with the door, that is the moment my dad said, well, this looks really cool. <laughs> <laughs> and my dad, like, he likes Star Wars, but it's not ever something that he'd be like, what am I in the mood for? Let's throw on some Star Wars. Yeah. But when he cuts the guy in half with the door, my dad was like, this is pretty cool. I'm, I'm going to have to watch this. <laughs> and, see, and this was something, I was watching the trailer, and I did have a brief, brief thought of, boy, my grandpa might have actually watched this. Because he was big into the Louis L'Amour books and, and the whole thing. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah so so I was like, you know, but he loved those westerns. I mean, I'm sure it wouldn't be his favorite, but it might be something he would sit and watch. You know, we tried to show him Cowboys and Aliens, but it didn't. Uh, <laughs> well, that didn't work for a lot of people. Yeah, yeah, that's, <laughs> yeah. that's fair. Who are even in the target audience. Yes. Yeah. But I liked a lot of the shots where it shows him like in, you know, a Western kind of mm-hmm. gunfight standoff, yeah. you know, high noon kind of a, we were going to walk 10 paces, you know. Yeah. I'm, I'm excited for it. I thought the music was good as well at, at sort of setting a yeah. intense tone. So, okay, tidbits. Are we ready? Yes. So, for the for the fans of the wider Star Wars universe, we have Blurgs from Ryloth from the Clone Wars. Mm-hmm. The little bipedal things that, like, Cham Syndulla and stuff rides on the liberation of Ryloth. Those, yeah. I okay. think, no, that's like the first season. Yeah, that's first that? season. Oh. Yeah, so Chris, you should I have seen I vaguely remember those. So, that's going to be cool to see a more, like, high-res, you know, realistic-looking mm-hmm. version of them. That's pretty cool. Um, Death Troopers to tie in Rogue One, which is cool. The Death Trooper leader, whose name you mentioned and I've already forgotten, uh, Giancarlo Esposito. Yep, that guy. Um, for now, I'm name. yeah. For now, his... I'm assuming his character's name is Fuscreen. <laughs> <laughs> his armor is not standard Death Trooper armor. From what it looks like, it looks more like Inferno Squad from Battlefront Two. It does. The book written yeah, about. I was noticing. So. That. Like, could he be, like, mm-hmm. some member of Inferno Squad? Like, Probably more like an elite, a different elite well, group. Well, but that's what but... I... Well, but Inferno Squad doesn't dissolve just because Iden Versio, but cow, also, you know, backs out like a fetch and coward but, instead but of supporting that, her emperor. That sort of armor would have been more standard issue for all sort of special forces. Well, yeah, some sort of special like forces. So, I mean, so that that's going to be cool, though. But a yeah. lot of people were like, hey, that looks kind of Among like what Among stormtroopers, being able yeah. to actually hit your target qualifies you for special forces. Um, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well... And also, but it, it's still also just a black version of what we see a lot of the high-ranking officials take. Yeah. Because, like, I'm thinking of um, um, both Thrawn and, what's the woman's name now all of a sudden? Price? I can't remember. Price. They, they'll they wear that armor when they go into battle. It's a very similar shape. Yeah, it's but just gray, a, yeah. Instead of black. So I'm excited to see what exactly that is, if he is some sort of Inferno Squad Special Forces, or ex-Special Forces, because the Empire is technically not a thing, supposedly, at this point. Three yeah, this years. Is- it's three yeah. years after, or five years five. after. I, I, I was going to say, I thought it was five. Uh, yeah, the, I think they said three earlier, but then at the timeline Disney released, it's five years mm-hmm. after Return of the Jedi. Mm-hmm. So, um, so uh, yeah, that uh, there's that. Oh, the Fang Fighter. So when his ship, it shows the ship in space getting shot by another ship. That's a Fang Fighter from season four or five of Clone Wars. Can't remember which one the Mandalorians first appear in uh, with their Fang Fighters, but it's the single... F- single man fighter of the Mandalorian people is what it looks like. I was anyway. wondering if that's what it was. So that looks pretty cool. I'm like, oh, so that we could potentially see more Mandalorians mm-hmm. that are not necessarily cool with each other. Um, the E-Web Blaster. All you Legion fans out there. So the E-Web is what the storm uh, snow troopers are bringing in to shoot at the Millennium Falcon right. in Episode 5 yeah. and they have to like mm-hmm. set it up on the tripod mm-hmm. and then the Falcon takes off. But from what we see oh, here... is that what he's shooting? Uh, when the that, guys are up on the roof yeah, and he's blasting, yeah. I'm going, there's your barrage generator from Legion where you just throw a whole bucket of dice at <laughs> <Yeah>. your enemies <laughs> for damage. Um, but that was kind of cool to see, to be like, hey, there's a weapon we've seen before briefly but haven't really got to see in action, and now it looks like we're going to get to. So mm-hmm. that's pretty cool. Uh, we do have the IG series Assassin Droid. It is sadly not IG-88. Yep. I think we've talked we've about talked that about before. It, yeah, it's IG-11 mm-hmm. yep. is who it is. A.K.A. Iggy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but it'll still be cool to see one of this model of Assassin Droid actually yeah. do Assassin Droid things, right? Yes. We, we see a little bit of them in the Clone Wars and a little bit in Rebels, but not nearly what we see in this trailer, yeah. just this trailer alone. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that'll be cool to get a little bit of reputation behind mm-hmm. the legend. But that was footage so. we'd already seen before. 
Uh, it was. It the, was. The, the okay. spinning around where he is. Yeah. Uh, so that was what nice. I was saying. Where it's okay. like a lot of the things that showing us here were stuff that yeah. I was like, yeah, I've seen that. But I'm still excited though, just overall, because it's like, oh, I yeah, yeah, like, you know, like I said, this, it's not that know, bounty it's hunter. not that I'm like unhappy yeah. about it. It's just sort of like As a I've, I feel it it, I've, I've plateaued here. I'm not yeah. like I'm not elevated. I'm not down. I'm just sort of meh. Okay. And so. and if I remember right. IG-11 is going to be voiced by Taika Waititi, right? I believe so. I believe that's Please, 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 let it be like Korg. (laughs) (laughs) No. No. I would love a Korg assassin. It would not work with the tone of the show. (laughs) It wouldn't, but it would be funny. Well, we don't know that. That's true, but no. Just please, no. Uh, I mean, if it goes the Firefly route. Yep. But... I uh, hey man. I hope not because gonna take as much as I do come? like as much as I do like John Favreau, no. I don't know if I would toss. I don't know if I would if I would trust him with Firefly level yeah. like whiplash between between uh, yeah. humor and yeah. seriousness. So yeah, it yeah. Joss Whedon did have a real knack. For yeah, Joss that. has Joss has a solid hand at that, and John Favreau. I, I'm I'm already just a little surprised at him taking this level of like serious like trying to go darker at all like i mean this is iron man slash jungle book man guy yeah. like and also iron man 2 guy which isn't less encouraging but um, well and he's produced on like a lot of the marvel movies as well because i yeah. was thinking didn't yeah. he produce on avengers that joss i don't directing? know if he did i know he produced on iron man 3 he didn't yeah. direct it in himself or write into it like he did yeah but he's had his, his hand in a lot of yes, the marvel yeah. movies mm-hmm. i mean both as an actor in them when he's playing happy but behind yeah. the scenes he's done a lot yeah. i don't know yeah. off the top of my head all of it but yeah. he's and he's clearly involved. quite competent but this is this yeah. does feel like a shift in tone for him I'm in way the first excited place, though so. because Dave Filoni is directing the first episode yeah. I'm beyond thrilled to see that happen well it'll be interesting to see what he does not in animation yeah so that's, beast, that's part of why I'm so. why I'm so excited is it's like you've got a good handle like probably the best handle on what Star Wars is outside of Lucas in my opinion and so to take the wheel at, a, at something live action I oh I cannot wait Oh my gosh, it's going to be good. Yeah. So expect a Nerf Nugget from us on like November 13th after I've watched this first episode <laughs> 10 times. <laughs> but uh, I think we're... Is that anything else we want to say? Yeah, yeah, the Mandalorian trailer? Yeah, yeah. Okay. All right, Chris is going to have to moderate this next one. Yes. <laughs> Ross and I got Come into on. a spat on yeah, Twitter. Let's get the uh, boxing gloves. <laughs> for reals. No, we have lightsabers here. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to fight Ross with lightsabers. That's true. He would beat me. <laughs> yeah, that's very true. I, I hooked Ross up with a fencing gig one time, and it turned into a career for a It turned while. into a yeah. life choice. Yep. Yeah, that was... yeah, so he, he would now beat me. As he Actually, I don't think I've ever won a sword fight against you. Even when we were kids, you just overpowered me and beat me down. I don't remember the early ones. I remember yeah. your mom coming out and yelling at us because we were fighting and I had that uh, yeah, golf, golf club, club. Without, <laughs> the, <laughs> without the head. It, it, oh, yeah, that's, it still that's so hurt much better. like a son of a gun. Anyway. <laughs> the the <laughs> real dangerous parts of those are the, the arms, like the, are yeah. the shafts there because those are fiber, usually fiberglass. Like, those shatter. It's nasty. Oh, boy. Uh, so... Star Wars came out with a tr- uh, not a trailer, it, well, a a, they poster. came out with a poster, episode nine poster for episode nine, which you've probably seen by now. It's got Rey and Kylo fighting on some sort of bridgy Pride Rock looking thing, and then Emperor Palpatine above rock. it. Yeah, yeah, I'm pretty sure it's supposed to be the Death Star. That it is. It's from, it's yeah. yeah. Uh, but, things, but at first glance, it's just it had the shape of Pride Rock, and that's what it made me think of. I'm like, <laughs> okay, you're fighting on Pride Rock, cool. And uh, they're going at it, and then you have like Palpatine, yeah, yeah, like, like sort blue of like and red lightning behind it. each yeah. of them, and then ghosty team. <laughs> so this came out, and I was far less than impressed. Ditto. Um, I looked at it and I'm like, my actually, <clears throat> when it first came out, I didn't even give it the time of day because I saw it and I'm like, oh, that's a crappily made fan poster that somebody threw together. Which is Not the worth my second time. time I have done that with a Star Wars Episode Nine promotional poster. Yeah, that's like the not first great. one was technically for a leaked one for merchandising, not for the movie itself. But even so, I was like, 
that's that's two in a row still. That's not... Yeah, so I looked at this and I said, I'm like... Because the first thing that you see, and of course that's the intent, is Ray and Kylo. That's where your eyes are drawn first, just mm-hmm. from the use and of that's light a nice and image. shadow. I like that a lot. And yeah. that part, I was like, okay, that's pretty cool. And then I look up and see Palpatine's mm-hmm. cartoon eyes and a mm-hmm. crappy drawn yeah. mouth, and I'm going, oh, oh, so this is like some like actual footage or like an actual poster that some fan like added Palpatine. Oh, okay. So this is crap. This is a crappy made fan poster moving on. I'm not even going to give it the time of day. I didn't realize until like two days later. No, this is the official thing. A while no, later. No. Sometime Currently later. two days <laughs> yeah. later. Oh, are we talking? Okay. We had this argument oh, that yesterday. day. yesterday. <laughs> no, it was yesterday, wasn't it? No, it was the day before. The day before. Oh, okay. Yeah. So later that day, I saw... I saw that Star Wars, like Star Wars' Twitter itself, yeah. was like, check out the new promotional poster for episode nine. And I was like, oh, this was a real thing? Oh, crap. Mm-hmm. So, okay, I can't let this go un- unchallenged. My sister pointed out that she had seen a comparison that she suspects that the reference material that they were using, if not just straight up lifting from for Palpatine there, was from the new Battlefront games. That could be, but. Uh, could be. I saw yeah, a different be. theory, yeah. which I actually think was the real one. We'll get into it so, when Kyler finished. Um, so I posted on Twitter, which I think... Do we want to read our argument, Russ? <laughs> yeah, I mean, may as well. So I posted it. a GIF of... Or I just retweeted it, and I posted the GIF of Michael Scott going, Nope, don't like that. Because <laughs> yep. that was pretty much exactly my reaction. And then... I elaborated in a reply to myself. I said, I saw this poster earlier and thought it was a so-so fan poster. There's literally a cartoon Palpatine in the background. It doesn't look good. This has definitely deflated some of my hopes for episode nine. Yeah. Because I'm just going, man, if that's the tone you're trying to set, because again, promotional material says this is what you can, or it should be saying, this is what the kind of thing you can expect this thing that we're promoting to be like. Right? That's the point of a promotional thing. Yeah. Dude, don't give me that face, Ross. If your if your promotional material is saying we're going to show you something that is not anything like what you're going to get, then it has utterly failed as a promotional. Generally, item, if right? a promotional poster is not actually showing something straight from the movie, it's because they are trying for just a tonal thing. That, but either way, but it's yeah, trying so to set way, a tone, and so I'm going. Clearly, a cartoon Palpatine, hopefully, is not going to appear in Episode Nine, which yeah. means the tone of this poster is some sort of cartoon. So I, I just It was a total poor choice that made me go, okay. So then Ross, snarkily and meanly... <laughs> wait, wait, let's, let, let's let Ross read his. <laughs> no, I know. I, I, I was hurt, because uh, you can't hear tone yeah. over the internet. So, so, I took issue with what Kyler had to say. Not with the analysis of the poster, because I generally agree. It's not a very well done poster. And I have to, I, I didn't pull up. Do you have it pulled up? I do. Okay. So I responded with, you know, the teaser has, poster has nothing to do with the actual quality of the film, right? Like, Theoretically. Like literally 0%. No. Are you trying to hate this film? And I have to totally disagree with that because I was like, again, the poster is supposed to be saying, this is the thing that you're going to go see. Here's well, a little snippet this is of official material. Yeah, like, this is the official sample of the thing that you're going to go see. So it should be representative. So to say that it has nothing to do with the I mean, and there are some the crappy movie posters film, out there that are, are kind of hacked together and not well done, but they're usually associated with kind of crappy movies that were hacked together right. and not well done. So... So to say that it has nothing to do with the quality of the film, I think is treating it too kindly. It, it does have something to do with the quality of the film. Which again makes me go, okay. Well, I'm now, I am now less excited about Episode Nine seeing this poster. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so I said, I wouldn't say that it has nothing to do with the quality of the film, as posters are part of the tone setting for the film. And I am not trying to hate on the film. I simply said that this poster makes me less excited for Nine, as opposed to more excited, as was its intent, presumably. Right? Yes. Just finish with the conversation. <laughs> okay. So Ross then said. It wasn't tone you were complaining about. It was the quality of the work. That's fair. Yeah. Who, whoever thought it was a good idea to put a cartoon Palpatine, mm-hmm. they ought to lose their job over this poster. Uh, even still, someone I might even go so far as to say whoever thought it was a good idea to put Palpatine in this movie 
Maybe also they should that. Lose yeah. We'll see. I mean, so it wasn't until for you now, were but... complaining about it was the quality of the work. Even still, someone on the marketing art team not quite being up to scratch has no bearing on the final film. Yes and no, in the sense that the poster is again trying to say this is the sort of thing that you're going to see. Mm-hmm. So, uh, and again, this is a Star Wars movie owned by Star Wars, which is owned by Disney, not being up to snuff. Like, this is a Star Wars movie that is following yeah. up a movie that made a lot of people very unhappy. That has been yeah. the biggest concern for me because there's a, there's a couple troubling signs of things that this yeah. brings up. But yeah, continue. So then I responded. I said, yes, the quality of work for a live action movie poster was below what I expected, but uh, is not the purpose of a movie poster to say, here are some things you can expect from this movie. And isn't one of those things the tone of the film? This poster let me down. <laughs> and then Chris <laughs> chimed in <laughs> saving the entire thing <laughs> wait guys this was the fan art after all I found the real poster and it's it's uh, Ian McDiarmid like in in costume like part way but he's wearing sunglasses and giving his big smile yeah. <laughs> and that's so he's wearing his post. Palpatine makeup from episode 3 but <laughs> yeah. he's got big huge deal with it sunglasses on his yeah, face it's and he's so good and- to which I naturally had only one acceptable response, which is, I take it all back, I'm in all the way, baby. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, the original um, poster itself, though, I'm, I'm really yeah. Like, if they didn't have Palpatine on there, if they'd, instead of that, if it just had the yeah. Episode Nine logo, I would be on board. That would be awesome. And I agree. And my, my theory is that's what it had originally. I could buy that. Yeah. I'm, I'm betting that Palpatine was not the original part of the poster that the person put together. It... It shouldn't have been, because again, you yeah. cover up Palpatine, or you take Palpatine out of there, and it's like, cool, That's blue force poster. lightning, red force mm-hmm. lightning, two cool action poses, they're about to start beating the crap out of each other, awesome, I'm, I'm down with that, yeah. that yeah. looks awesome. And then Palpatine, it's like, Ugh. and it looks like Palpatine It's very from, jarring. It's yeah. Exactly, he looks like Palpatine from Star Wars Rebels, mm-hmm. which is fine in Star Wars Rebels, yes. yeah. where everything else also kind of looks that way, but it's so... Jarring is exactly the right word, Chris. Because the rest of it all looks photorealistic, or at least reasonably close to that. Yes, exactly. Whereas he does not. And some people said, no, 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 if you zoom in and look, you know, you can see that, like, Rey and uh, Kylo are also, like, hand-drawn. They're also... And I'm like, okay, but that's not what it looks like. At first glance, from far away, without having to go to the extra effort of scrolling super in and zooming in, they look like it's the actors that are supposed to be there, and it was a, a photo. And then we have cartoon Palpatine. It yeah, just my, looks so dumb. My dismay when seeing this was mainly focused on Palpatine being there at all. Um, because like like I said in our uh, Star Wars Celebration episode, I the my main concern with the trailer was this, like, no, there are very few good things you can do with bringing Palpatine back. Star Wars has done this badly so many times in the expanded universe. And Ross rightfully pointed out that this could be nothing. It could just be a little cameo. It could be a force vision. It could just be like recorded material that we're looking through. But then I put po- my problem there was, well, if that is the case and they put him in this, po- his laugh in this position of prominence at the end of the trailer and then cut from the trailer to reveal Ian McDermott standing on the yeah. stage to tell everyone to roll. Like that's way too much prominence for something that is not actually well, significant. And it's the, misleading. The, the trailer that, that we're going to talk about later also has new dialogue. From yes, him, yeah. so. but to put, well, I actually yeah. the trailer actually Let's, lifted my spirits about that. But I would, yeah. but that when I saw this poster, I was like, well, that's this is once again them putting Palpatine in a significant position of prominence, which I, d- yes. which if they're doing this well, I cannot think of any way they can do it well and not have it be stupid <laughs> that he deserves that level of prominence. And I'm so. I'm kind of with Chris on this one. I'm going sure if you can do Palpatine well in here then by all means, you know, I'm, yeah. it, it'll all be okay. But kind of like Chris, I'm going, I just don't see a way that this is going to be done yeah. well, especially not now that we're seeing him, yeah, being given more spotlight yeah. and things. I just... Ugh. And the more that I see of this, and the more I do think that this is basically a red herring, that he is not going to be significant, not hugely at least. And this is because because they keep using it so much, and there's so little that they're actually giving mm-hmm. us overall here. Like they are, they are very carefully parsing out nothing about this film. Like so even yeah. the, like, and when you look at the last Jedi, the trailers they gave us were not 
at all reflective of what the movie actually ended up being. They seemed like they were spoiling the entire movie and it turned out they were not at all. Yeah. And, but I do feel like this is just straight up JJ J. J. Abrams or someone else in marketing going, you know what, let's just, whatever, let's just give them some stuff, lead them on so that we're not giving them the actual stuff, something that'll excite people. But I'm like, no, that's the thing with Palpatine is like, he's either not exciting to people. They're annoyed that he's here like me. And then they're going to be relieved that he wasn't, but still irritated that it ever happened in the first place. <laughs> or if people are actually excited to see Palpatine again, then they're just going to be hugely disappointed if he's just a footnote in the movie. Ugh. Yeah. So can I give my analysis as to what I think happened with the poster? You sure. may not. Oh. <laughs> well, I told people on Twitter. Well, I was listen, going can, to can we? <laughs> wait, let's take a let's take a vote. Ah, oh, yeah, dang it! Yeah, looks like Ross can do that. Okay. So, um, <laughs> also, Ross could record it later on his own and edit it anyway. That's and there's nothing true. we can do about it. And honestly, <laughs> if, you, if you had honestly moved on, I was going to do that anyway. Um, so, anyway, okay. So, uh, yes, this poster is a little bit troubling. Everything that we've talked about so far is yep. you're, you're all spot on. The the uh, rendering of the the lightning and, and Kylo and Ray and, and everything down there in the bottom oh, half of the so poster are there. great. Yeah. yeah, they're fantastic. The quality of Palpatine <laughs> at the top does not match what's down at the bottom. That could be for two reasons. One is two different artists. Mm. Uh, <sighs> the other, which is probably more likely, is a short deadline. Now, probably what happened was, as they said, okay, artist here, we have this poster. Go nuts. Give us what you got. He did the thing, got it done, sent it like up Like did the review. bottom half? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, did yeah. the bottom half, had the... Ha I'm betting, if it were me would have put the title instead of down at the bottom where put it, it was, top. put it yeah. up top where Palpatine is, because there's just oh, no that would have looked so there. much better. Yeah. I know. Yeah. And oh, I'm betting man. that's what it was. Again, also, disclaimer. It would have, and the, the lighting with the red and the blue would have framed that title much better than mm -hmm. it does with Palpatine, where it intersects Palpatine and looks kind of weird. Yeah. Yeah. Um, by the way, this is all just my speculation that I could be totally Yeah, wrong. none of this us is, have any yeah. inside information. Yeah. This is us just... More's the pity. We're not on. that big of a Star Wars podcast <laughs> yeah. yet. Yet. So, <laughs> what happens is, is he turns it in for review. It goes up the chain. Probably the person right above him probably loved it, passed it up. It goes up and, and starts floating around in kind of the bureaucracy of any large studio. At some point, someone checks it against what they kind of want to be showing for the film, right? Um... And say, well, these things are, are thematically important. We need to have, we want to have these reflected to generate hype. Okay. So Palpatine will, will have some sort of significance, whether it's a force vision, whether he's in it, again, hopefully not, whether it's even something, um, just something that he had put forth has great significance on the events that they're dealing with in the movie. He may not even appear at all. It's just something that he, some, mm -hmm. some, uh, uh, I'm forgetting the word, some policy he had put forward all of a sudden rears its head. Right. Something like that. Which would be disappointing based on what they've shown us. Sure. Um, <laughs> either, whatever it is, Palpatine will have some sort of significance, so they wanted him reflected in the poster to get everyone talking. So it probably got passed back down, then rejected, and they said, hey, we need Palpatine in here somewhere. Do something. <laughs> By the way, you have a day to do this. Yeah. You know? I could see that. Because always, it'll always float around forever with the bureaucrats. And it'll always get yeah. real close, and they'll be like, well, but it's not at the deadline yet. You can do it, right? You have a magic do art button. It'll be great. <laughs> yeah, you that happens a lot. think with Disney's money, they probably do have a do art button. <laughs> they should share that. Um, the, uh, so it gets back to the artist. Huh, they do like, have a do art button, but it's connected to electrodes attached to several different artists. So <laughs> wouldn't work well for you. Matrix-style harvesting Disney, please artists. don't sue us. Yeah. Um, so it gets back down to him, and he's like, well, what am I going to do? Uh, I need Palpatine. I can't just do a regular portrait picture that we have so many of where he's always looking off to the left or right of the yeah. camera because that just wouldn't fit with the flow it would not of the work piece. With that. That's true. So he needed something straight on. Now, um, I could not think off the top of my head of any straight on pictures of Palpatine. There are some that are close, especially in the throne room. Yeah. And the one that I could think of that was the closest is when he's shocking Luke. I was I'm thinking of him sure. smiling over the lightsabers, but yeah. Ross Even posted that in that Twitter outside. argument that he was like, I couldn't, I Googled this, I could not find mm -hmm. any images of this, and I was like, challenge accepted! I didn't post that on Twitter, thankfully, because after a quick <laughs> Google search, and then another Google search, and then another one, mm -hmm. I then slunk off into the shadows in shame. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Tail between your legs. Yes, sir. <laughs> so this gets me to the other theory that... Well, and that is just theory. shocking to me, that it's like, you're Disney. You are 
Disney Mm -hmm. promoting or you're making a promotional poster for one of your biggest films of the year. This is a film that could easily top $2 billion. Yeah, Yeah. and it's like, and you're telling me if your artist says, hey, you you need a a front-on shot, can we get one because I don't have one, that you can't be like, listen, Ian McDermott, whose contract certainly like entails, you know, blood and organs, get over here <laughs> yeah. for a photo shoot real quick. You can you know give us I mean? a lung or you can get a photo shoot. You know, you like, so. or the, the, like they don't, that they don't have like unused images or stills that like aren't on Google somewhere. Mm-hmm. Like you're telling me with all of the resources of Lucasfilm and Disney, there's not one front shot of the yeah. emperor yeah. which anywhere. my sister pointed at what pointed out she was wondering she's like well maybe the, if they don't have those at all maybe that does indicate that we n- we're never going to get anything but his voice in this movie like yeah maybe they haven't dressed him up maybe he has That's not gotten in possible. but again in if emperor you're going if you're him. saying <clears throat> sorry artist or, we're rejecting this poster because it doesn't have palpatine's face on it and the artist goes i need palpatine's face then that they can't be like, <clears throat> throw some makeup on Ian McDermott yeah, and yeah, put a hood fair. on him. Take um, a picture, you know? A lot of that comes down to money, because then they have to pay Ian again. I know, yeah, I know. And also, Disney, it also, like, I don't know. Problem. Uh, Ian McDermott is getting pretty old. He may not be available for rush things like that yeah. anymore. It's, but also, well, they can, again, like, this is he, literally <laughs> the same conversation I've had with my own bosses a time or two. They don't yeah. do it. For whatever reason. Well, Hold but, on. Now, just, I know. I know, I know, I know, I know. Again, but we have, your we have bosses to go are not Disney, okay. Okay. Disney I'm, ad, I'm adjudicating here. Okay. Give Ross some time. Thank you. <laughs> so, um, the theory that I saw that actually seems to work out best in my mind is that it's actually a picture that he's photoshopped from a, a statuette of the Emperor. Oh. They, they did some really high detail, oh. Oh. which... Um, it, it From the zoom in of the, the picture that the person posted, it, it actually does look quite a bit like this. It's hard to tell huh. because of the rendering oh, on the poster. Interesting. I know. I know. That's but, a, such a... Oh. But it would have been the best the artist had to work with. Yeah, I'm assuming. <laughs> again. Yeah, maybe. So, um, a little bit of an aside, and this is answering one of the questions, the discussions I had on Twitter. <laughs> and, and this is about oh, the, the, sample, the sample images. So, my first job after college was with a company called 3D Plus Me. What we did at that company was we sent around scanners to things like Comic-Cons. They even started doing some in Targets in California for a while, um, where the the scanner would take a a scan, a photo scan of your face. Um, We would take that that scan, um, cut it off of the rest of your body, and put it on um, pre-built 3D models that you could buy. I think I have heard of this company. I think they were like, they've been at Gen Con and stuff. They might have been. Like where you can like get like your own like D&D character made and it's your face on your D&D character. We didn't do D&D characters. It's probably different. Okay. Companies doing the same thing. Okay. Um, this company started off actually doing D23, ironically enough, doing Mouseketeers. Oh, wow. They would take people's faces and they would just be in like a mouse hat and you know the, the huh. uniform. Anyway, they eventually expanded out into Marvel um, and Star Wars, which I forgot after until after I had had that conversation on Twitter. <laughs> um, I did a bunch of, of Star Wars. They had these dolls, like the big, you know, have you seen the big Marvel dolls? They're they're about a foot tall. I've um, seen s- something like that, sure. I actually, I had one around here at one point, but they're kind of lame, so I don't know. Oh, actually, they're in the toy box downstairs. That's right. The one that we have the kids play with when the kids oh, come okay. over. Yeah. Anyway, so they would actually, they sent us those. We would pull the heads off, make the 3D printed head, and put it back on and ship it to the customer. Right, and so you could have a, your kid's head on Captain America in Iron Man's helmet on Iron Man's body, you know that sort of thing. That's kind of cool. They they were doing a, a Jedi line, which you remember in that one Star Citizen, uh, old oh, community manager uh-huh. Ben, yes. got one, and we saw it on the one live stream yep. they were doing. Yeah. Yep. I remember um. That. Anyway, so actually, yeah, mine was Star Wars. Uh, that one we didn't have to worry about sample images too much because they already they just sent us the dolls. Like, okay, make this for your promotional material. And so we just recreated them in 3D, and it was fine. Uh, we also had licenses with Lord of the Rings and uh, Marvel and Harry Potter. Um, and the other big one that we were doing when I first joined was Major League Baseball. They would go around to sporting events wow. and put your child in one of the players' uniforms. Right? The other big statue. nerds out there. I yeah. Know, <laughs> um, Major League Baseball had an amazing... Uh, uh, all of a sudden, Amazing turnout. Style guide. Yeah. A style oh. guide that they, that they <laughs> oh, God, gave yeah, to they us. Would. It had every team, every logo, every font, yeah. every stripe, and every... That actually doesn't surprise me yeah. at all. Yeah. Nope. All specifics on these stripes go here on the pants and on the shirts and do all this sort of thing. It was great. We had no problem recreating those. 
Lord of the Rings was a different story. <laughs> oh my word. Marvel was an, an, another different story because they gave us a license for the comic book representations but not movie. Not movie. Yeah. Um... Which became really weird when you started thinking about Iron Man because the comic books inspired the movie which then inspired the comics. Yes. Anyway, it was a whole thing. That, that's happened a lot with Marvel at this point. Yes, it has. Um, and so Lord of the Rings was the big one that I was working on and the style guide that we got from them, they wanted us to do some Gondorian Rangers for one of these products. Mm -hmm. uh, the style guide they sent me was two pictures really? of Faramir standing just like, like it was like he was like in between takes, just randomly standing around. They were just like little snapshots. Really? That was <laughs> all they gave me to go off of. Wow. And so I had to go in and take my own shots from the movies. I started taking stuff also from Talion from the the uh, Shadow, Shadow of Mordor, Mordor games yeah. and kind of just mixing them all together to make kind of a generic Gondorian Ranger. Wow, I you cannot know. believe they didn't have more for you. Then. I know. Me oh. too. And that's, that's where this conversation that we just had well, comes into play. But that's giving your stuff to another company. Well, now, if Lord them, of the yeah. Rings is going, I'm Lord of the Rings and I want to make a Lord of the Rings promotional thing... You've got a lot more to work with, you know what I mean? And like they might be going, well, this is some podunk company. We don't you know. Ruin well, you the know what happened here? Is it, remember the guy in the Hawaiian shirt with the cigar? <laughs> like it's it's him. It's basically this got up the the chain and he's just like, put Palpatine on this. It's like what? Why? Yeah. He's barely even in this. It's like who cares? He'll sell stuff. The nerds love Palpatine. It's like I don't know if people really are that thrilled it's about this. this. It might piss people off. Palpatine. Even better, free publicity. <laughs> We'll have nerds sitting on podcasts debating that poster for ages. <laughs> but, but to me, <laughs> yeah, that's no such true. thing as bad publicity. But to me, it just it seems so odd that Disney, with all of its money and resources, oh, yeah. couldn't but, get it together. And I could see still, it. I agree, though, that I could. see But it's it like even if Ian McDermott isn't actually in it, so they never had to have him in costume. It's not like a picture like you couldn't like call up an artist in like Britain or something and be like. Get a makeup team over to his house, slap some on there, take two pictures, email us by the end of the day. You know, <laughs> like, with all of their money, I can't imagine. But with, that... they are still a business and they don't want to spend all yeah, of their it's money. Yeah, it's also a question of projected returns. Yeah. Like, is it going to be worth the money Ugh. to do that? Or Especially are we going to when... just get more publicity from people complaining about the poster? Yeah. Especially when you've also had an artist who has apparently also just painted something photo real. <laughs> Right. Yeah. And so it comes down from those business guys. They're like, well, you just you did this. Just do that. You know, so like you fine. understand that there's it's a the classic sir, that there's a significant difference not between understanding yeah, how their people exactly. work. Exactly. There's a significant be difference done. between painting a yeah. photorealist, photorealistic silhouette from a distance and painting a photorealistic close up of a face. <laughs> yeah. And see, and that was the thing. And then yeah. the artist on his short deadline goes, well, I can't paint this in that amount of time. So we're going to have to The artist goes, okay, fine. Just don't attach my name to this, please. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah basically. And so oh, that's boy. the other thing is that, so those that make the film are going to be separated from the marketing, even if it's still in-house. That's true. I um, love that we have spent as much time talking about this poster as we have everything else this episode. <laughs> well, and because this is this is a problem that I've had in my own career, yeah. you yeah. know, and, and to finally yeah. see people talking about these same issues is, is really nice for me. Right. Um, I can give you some insight. He can vent a little bit about yeah. how awful managers are. Yeah. But it's, <laughs> it was absolutely uh. astounding to me at how difficult it was to get resources from a company that you were contracted and licensed with. Yeah. Would that um, be straight oh, from right. New Line Cinema or was that from... Uh, for Lord else. of the Rings, it was from New Line. Okay, yeah. yeah. Um, now, it was funny, though, because Microsoft was actually fine, because we also did Halo. They wanted us to help do this thing to help mm. promote Halo 5 when it was okay. coming out. Um, and so they actually sent us the in-game models, and that was That's absolutely cool. fascinating <laughs> for, for a game artist like myself. <laughs> yeah. but, uh, well, and um, gamer who enjoys the Halo series anyway. Yeah. 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 So That's that was, cool, that was really cool to look at the Halo 5 models, but uh, weren't as complicated as you might think. Um. <laughs> But uh, I can't remember. There was then there were two questions from the Twitter that I I had to answer, and I don't remember if I've answered both of them or not. Do you remember anything else in that conversation? Nope. Okay. I just felt hurt that my friend was attacking me. <laughs> it's hard to read tone on Twitter sometimes, yeah. so I read Ross's tweets to me much more harshly than they were intended. Yes. Which happens in the text, and I should have been aware of that. I'm sorry. It's, it's okay. It's okay. Because we all know you. how harsh and horrible Ross can be. I know, I know right? That's why person. I was reading him and I'm like, wow, Ross is like really like <laughs> taking this hard and like lashing out at me. Jeez. And meanwhile, Kyler referenced the argument on Twitter in our text messaging and I was just like, 
I got in an argument with you on Twitter? When did I do that? <laughs> and then I pulled up Twitter and was he like, doesn't remember. <laughs> yeah, I was just like, well, I feel bad. Like, was I a jerk and I didn't notice it? And then I pull it up and I was like, you guys had an argument and I wasn't even part of it? <laughs> yeah, you weren't that? violent? Was, what? Yeah. <laughs> so you guys were arguing without me? Yeah. Uh, yeah. So to to those that we were talking with on Twitter, I'm sorry if I have forgotten your your question in our conversation. Please He'll let get me know on it. Facebook, and I yeah will converse with you about it there. So moving on from that, yes, yes. there was one more little piece of th- stuff to come yeah, out. Yeah, it's a through. tiny thing. You, I don't know if people noticed it really. Uh, I don't know if you guys saw this, but episode nine got like a trailer, basically. Uh, mm-hmm. can, a, yes, it's a trailer. A, well, it's no, it's it's the D twenty three. Footage. footage yeah but it, it is specifically like not trailer. yeah it does play out as a, like a trailer but it is specifically not labeled one a of their trailer. official trailers yeah. so it starts off by giving us footage of the original trilogy mm-hmm. and then <clears throat> excuse me then the prequel trilogy mm-hmm. uh, and that's like basically half and of then the, the sequel movies we've already seen and then the sequel movies we've already seen yeah and then we get like 30, 45 seconds, something like that, somewhere in there. It's about mm-hmm. a two-minute long trailer, and it's like 30, 45 seconds, somewhere in there, the last little bit yeah. that gives us, here's episode nine. And I went through and made little notes for some of the different scenes and things that popped out for me. Oops. So so we're not going to worry about the first part and the stuff we've already yeah, seen, yeah. right? Yes. Yeah. Go so. watch the movies. They're already out. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> then you'll know what those scenes are from. So if you've been listening to, to this podcast and you haven't watched them, wow, uh, thanks. <laughs> thanks for listening to us. You're probably very confused. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Sorry for all the spoilers. <laughs> not really. I don't care. I'm not responsible for what you can Obi-Wan on the dies, internet. guys. He does. As do many, many others. And not just men. But, but women, women and children, and children too. too. <laughs> I got to find ways to throw it in there now. <laughs> if you're going to do newsy news, I'm going to work that in. That's fair. That's fair. Actually, I was thinking the other day. Yeah, kind of needs a catchphrase, and that's you're right. That's kind of uh, that's kind of it. <laughs> so, um, episode nine, new footage. My note is Kyler is more excited now, but still wary. Ross, Chris, I'm quite excited. I'm more feel? excited. Yeah, yeah I, I, I like felt like all in all that. It the the main thing for me was it actually alleviated some of my concerns about that. This yeah. watching this was what made me go, oh, they're just screwing with screwing around with Palpatine. Like it's not, it yeah. doesn't feel like a, that significant of yeah. a thing anymore. So, so the first thing that popped out to me, Chinese New Year in the desert. Yep, that was Burning Man, Burning Man, Chinese bur- Burning Man, Burning the Chinese New Year in the Chinese desert. Space Burning Man. Yes. Yep. So I'm I am actually interested to see what that is like is this some new culture like because i'm always happy in star wars when they decide to flesh out a culture to be like oh you're on utapau like this is what utapau people do yeah you know i'm I'm always excited to make it yeah they have no dentists on utapau it's an outlawed profession um but i'm I'm always excited to see them put flesh on the bones you know yeah i remembered what i was going to talk about with the teaser poster i was (laughs) going to go through and and show you all the other star wars teaser posters oh yeah we're doing we can do we should do that that would be a fun do that later yeah um very cool it's always cool i think to see ships dropping out of hyperspace it's yeah, just, I, it's I such enjoyed a cool that. Shot. It was especially like, novel because there wasn't a star background. Like it was interesting yeah, it was, to see this yeah. cloudy background mm-hmm. and be like, "Wow, what is going on?" So here? it's yeah, and I love it. Anytime that ships are dropping out of hyperspace, it's one of the coolest things I think visually for Star yeah. Wars. I just I love it. I can it, that, that, yep. it. The little kid inside me is just like, "Yay, we're about <laughs> to see things get blown up and shoot!" Yay, yeah. you know. <laughs> uh, and then the very next thing we see, uh, and all caps, very cool to see a large Imperial fleet dot 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 for the taking yeah yeah because they're all lined up like fresh out of the factory or something like they're they're not in a battle we had someone in the group yes and then that sparked a really good facebook group so let's uh, well well, let's back up real quick um to the the shot before with the they're all rebel ships yeah the rebel ships Mm -hmm. yeah they're very Um, clearly rebel like we've got x-wings and there's a cr90 there's x-wings a-wings y-wings well and that's that's the interesting thing is it's a mix of eras we have the newer yeah. X-Wings, which I didn't oh, get yeah, a chance. You I was out. laughing. Right. I was laughing reading the well, thread Steven on here. And it was oh, like, Steven. it's really handy to have people can, who can identify these things at a glance. Yeah. <laughs> um, so you had the newer X-Wings, but you had all the older Y-Wings, B-Wings, and A-Wings? I don't know if there is a newer version. There, it, it is technically a newer version. Like, the wing, like the, the, the foils on the back are a little bit different. Are they? And yeah, it's a um, little bit longer as well. It's like, a, like it got stretched out a little bit. The, okay. Older e wing, uh, A wings are a little bit more like squat. Yeah, yeah, squat. That's a good word. Um, but then there was one random nebulous ship that we did not, we could not identify. The long one, 
the first one that pops in that everyone was like, oh, it's a Falcon. No, wait a minute. No, not the Falcon. it's the, it, it looks to me like it's the rebel transport ship that Leia disembarks from on to, uh, Takodana. That's kind of so? like, that, that's what it looked like to me at first glance. I wasn't hmm. not Googling. Yeah, that's, I, I could be wrong. I'm not going to make mistaken bet nachos on this. Um, I also wasn't paying too much attention to that part other than like, yeah. oh, it's cool to see him pop out. Ah, oh, there's my Star Destroyers. When I first <laughs> saw it, I had a moment of just like, oh, I hope they're not doing that whole lost fleet, remnant fleet sort of thing. And that these are, they, they just got lost in space or something like Star Wars has done this before it. I never thought it was very good then. Uh, but the, there was a comment on, I posted the video to the, our group and it was uh, Brandon Berent. Or I yep. apologize if I pronounced yep, Brandon Barrett. All yep. right. Play Legion uh, Brandon him. mentioned on He's there. He's like, to me, it looks like the aircraft graveyards we have all lined up sitting there. And I was like, oh, it really does look yeah. like that. That was a really yeah. nice analogy. I heard that and I was like, you know, now I hope it is that. Like, that makes perfect sense. I can it buy does. that. And especially because those are ISD ones. Yes. They're the older model of the Imperial class, which yeah. was outclassed by episode five, even, mm-hmm. and replaced with the Imperial yeah. two. So, so thanks, Brandon. You made me happier about that. So that <laughs> could be, uh, definitely could be a thing i would be it'd be really interesting to see the rebels go hey we just learned about this place and um you know we need a bunch of ships in a hurry yeah. i could <laughs> Everybody i am grab curious a star to see how that goes if that is like i'm i am betting because we see we so we presumably assuming those shots are lining up accurately we see finn and um i forget her at all yeah well <laughs> the the Lando's daughter. We don't know oh, that's yeah. who she is, but I'm assuming. Yeah. Um, <laughs> we see Finn and Lando's daughter. They're looking at it, and it's like, but we don't see Poe and Ray. So I'm like, I'm assuming this is later in the film when we've broken off and we're not all together, and they're rushing to get to this fleet. And, you know, that could absolutely be wrong. And so that could be right at the beginning that it's like, hey, we found a fleet of Star Destroyers, or it could be that those are actually manned by the bad guys. Who knows? But, yeah. It might be a B plot for Finn and. Yeah, it could be. I, I picture looking at it. I was like, I could see that being though the frame that they hang, that they hang the plot on. Like this is the plot coupon that we're all chasing after. We have to, you know, whoever gets to this first is gonna have is be able to trade yeah. this in for explosions. Yeah. And... Okay, I take it back. Ross pulled up the picture uh, of the rebel fleet dropping out of hyperspace for the second ship in question. I also have her ship on a different tab in that. Yeah. yeah. Um. Yeah. It's it's not that ship yeah, I, no, I take it not. back but i wonder if the perspective here because it looks like the cr90 yeah. is a little closer yeah i wonder if this is the nimka class corvette that we see in episode eight it's one of the ones that gets blown away as they're siphoning gas to the radis oh, maybe. Oh. Uh, maybe and so it's kind of got that like hammerhead shape yeah, to the to yeah, the bow I, I wonder if it's that and it's just a little bit further back mm-hmm. so it looks smaller than well, the cr90 and you're seeing it at a three-quarter right because i'm looking at those engines and it lo- they they could be i'm not yeah, saying that it is be. but it could be but the head or the the front of it looks quite wide and solid all in one piece so mm-hmm. that's the only ship i can think of that fits that and yeah. it could be so something new we don't it know. could be something new which yeah. as an armada player i'm always down for new ships being revealed because that means new toys especially so yeah, <laughs> yeah. oh wait what rebels need more ships <laughs> <laughs> Disdain, sir. Disdain. Cont- continue on. <laughs> I'm just kidding. What are we complaining about? We just got a Super Star Destroyer. <laughs> yeah, yeah, really, real. That is that is the reason Rebels oh, need man. more ships. So I just went to an Armada tournament on We're getting Saturday. Getting yeah, yeah, yeah. uh, sorry. Oh, I got my butt handed to me by a Super Star Destroyer. It was not pleasant. Um, okay, next thing that shows up, I mean... Oh, that Imperial Fleet is just so cool looking. The next thing that shows up is 3PO with red eyes. Yes. So here's my totally going to happen fan theory. You guys ready? <laughs> you guys ready? I'll be... It would be cool that I got it right, because I just am pulling this out of my butt. Yep. But then I would be pretty much overall not happy with it. Um, <laughs> so in the Dr. Afra comics, we have Triple Zero and BT-666. Mm-hmm. An evil version of 3PO and R2, basically. Yes. One is an astromech, one is a protocol droid, and they are evil to the core. Lots of needles and rockets and guns, and they want to hurt everyone. He has red eyes. Mm. So here's my fan theory. Triple Zero is a computer. He's a machine. And he's programming like anything else. So what if like his body got damaged and he like downloaded himself a la Ultron and like took over... 
three PO's body, and his eyes are red because it's now this crazy because murder hobo. He, he decided he wanted red <laughs> eyes, even though that would totally give him away. Yeah, yeah, I don't know, but I was just that also, was my we'd first have, thought. We, we would have to go to the legwork of introducing him in the yes, exactly. Well, and exactly. also introduce hacking, which is not something that's really been correct. Assumed. True, we haven't really done that at well, all. Well, not it, major. Yeah, not major. We yeah. a little bit. You know, R two will plug in to open like, doors. Yeah, but yeah, but not like and, steal. and one one droid hacking another to take it over. Like the closest yes. we've got to that is in Rogue yeah, One. Yeah, invasion with, of the body snatcher kind of so, but he never oh, takes yeah, anything that's over. True. He's just hacking. The so memory. that's my crazy fan theory that will definitely not happen. But yeah. that was where my mind went. Yeah. I'm like, Red aside, Eyes on a protocol droid. Yeah, it's aside BT, from triple zero, our uh, group, our group. Uh, Group think one that we did on the Facebook there that he has accidentally downloaded Palpatine and that was the red arm. <laughs> uh, I want that to be that there is some sort of programming setup that controls that entire fleet of ISDs and that's what I was going to say. Three, oh, so three PO is in control yes. of that fleet. That was my legit guess. <laughs> and I think that would be hilarious. That they're like, well, we don't have the manpower to run this, and three PO's like. Hold my beer. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I totally picture it as being like some ridiculous accident because it's 3PO and now 3PO is just like, what the frick do I do with this? Yeah. <laughs> what do I do with, you know, 120 Star Destroyers? Oh, dear. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the answer is anything you want. Anything you want, pretty much. Yeah, exactly. Um, the answer is you lose to the rebels. So, uh. so. <laughs> 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 yes. So, uh, the next thing that we see is a red laser beam blasting yeah. through a planet or a mountain yeah. or something uh, some, like that. Yeah, something significant. So here, significant, but clearly not as powerful as yeah, Starkiller Base. Thankfully. Because if we were going to Fantasy Flight that, Games at Gen Con, when they revealed the Onager class Siege Breaker Star oh, Destroyer, yeah, that's fair. in the description of it, it specifically says... That it's got, you know, super laser technology or whatever that can blast through mountains. Hmm. That was specifically mentioned as yep. an ability of and this. And they've already and, established that. And what is in it shooting in this scene? Eight. It is blowing through a mountain. Yeah. I could see that. Well, and so and there have already been rumors that the Onager was going to be exactly. Episode, right? so, so all of those, all of this circumstantial evidence taken together, I think we are going to see yeah. the Onager. And they've already in established the nine. tech in Episode Eight, right? And, that's, and we're going to see yeah, it blasting could, through a mountain to get to an underground. You've base. You sold me. Yeah. I'm on board. Yeah. Okay. That's what happened. So that's happening. what I think is going on in that scene. Could be wrong, but that's... Uh, oh, and my notes are, is that an Onager I'm designed to blast mountains away class Star Destroyer? <laughs> Blasting away mountains? <laughs> so, uh, that's what I think. Ray and Kylo fighting in water on a Death Star 2 wreckage. Cool. Just cool. Yeah. You know, it looks it looks like it will be a good, entertaining lightsaber fight, sure. which is always what you want out of a Star Wars Which I'm fight. also going to go on a limb and say that that is not an Act 3 fight, probably Act 2. Do you think? Yeah. I could see that. Because yeah. while they have shown us, like, setups for ending fights in trailers mm -hmm. for the previous two, they haven't shown us the actual fight, and in this case, they're actually showing us a fight. Yeah. So. I could, yeah. You've sold me. All right. It's I, could see, that, yeah. I could see that. I could see it. I could see that. Um, and then finally, Ray gets a double lightsaber, and it's red. <laughs> so, and she's very pale, and her eyes are sithy, and she's wearing yes. black. Well, so, the hood. they weren't red. I have no, I several have things to yellow. say about this. Oh no, we missed we missed part of the. There's also. Oh yeah, this Ray, was just my list of things. Yeah, there's there was Ray training out. on the forest in the forest oh, yeah. area. The saber throw. Where it she, was awesome. yeah, yeah, she threw the saber at the training droid. Chucks a it, like cuts through a tree. Yeah, and then she's pulling, grabbing like cloths. I'm assuming this is like first act, very close to the beginning. She's training with Leia stuff. But, that makes yeah. sense to me because yeah. yeah, there was one little shot of Leia just kind of standing there, yeah. which. Uh, looking at a still, I think they photoshopped her face. You do? I do. You think they tarkened her? I do think. Well, I mean, not exactly, but like, I think, I think they took the old footage and put it on someone else's body, which they do all okay. the time. Yeah. Because uh, Leia was never in that costume, so it can't be all old file footage. Her. So unless it was scenes that were entirely cut where she was in a different costume. Yeah, but, but maybe it is less likely. Yes. Yeah. Um. So yeah, fun tidbits. What about what oh, her eyes? eyes. I'm, oh yeah, Ross, Ross has pulled up a picture of yeah. her when she's got both okay, blades yeah. right up by her face. Yep, yeah, um, they're still regular color. So I'm super excited to see this just because I have been saying since episode seven and seeing her fight with her little staff. Give the girl a double bladed lightsaber for heaven's sakes. Even if give it's it a to her. One. 
Even if it's a stupid one. I just, I want to, she, her, that's her fighting style, so I want to, her to have it. I agree with now, that. Yeah. Like, I would like to. Chris doesn't like the lightsaber because it flips. I've like always a, Like an old flip phone. Yeah. Uh, so, uh. It's just so impractical. It's like, what is the point? Like, it, it's true. You activate it and you've got two there. You can't wield that, so you can't use it like, you can't use this weapon like Darth Maul did as a single bladed lightsaber if you want. It's just, un, it's just awkward and unwieldy until you flip it open. And why? Why? The, like, it serves no purpose unless you really, really, really are at a premium for s- long storage space and you have to shorten this somehow. Like, yeah. It just, it, it's... So, it is it is impractical and silly. Yeah. But it is not without precedent. Mm-hmm. In yeah, Star it is Wars from- Rebels, we see that the Grand Inquisitor, and I'd have to go back and check some other scenes from Clone Wars to see if other Temple Guard do it, but the Grand Inquisitor was a... Coruscant Jedi Temple Guard. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and he has one of these flip ones. So there is precedent for this style of oh, lightsaber. Yeah. See, but that's that's the funny thing for me is, is like I look at it and like like I love lightsabers. Lightsabers are rule of cool all the way. Like that's yeah. they are the origin of the rule yeah, of cool. They really. sure it's are. Like, <laughs> they make no sense whatsoever. They probably never will, but they're so cool. Who cares? And Darth Maul's lightsaber was like, okay, we're going up. We, we've, but it's so cool. <laughs> sure. We've doubled the cool. <laughs> but then it's like after that that they just got like desperate for like we have to and, and rebels is the greatest defender on this where it's like let's just come up with like what could else what else could be cool and it's like it's just the getting silly saber, and yeah. kind of die. and that's that's how i felt about kylo ren's lightsaber when i saw it it's like yes yes we're trying so hard to be cool in yet a different way and i'm like lightsabers were awesome f- for like 30 years before we had to start going no 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 that's not enough they all have to be visually distinct in stupid ways and and so I saw that and I was like, so what's going on here basically is either this is a force vision that Ray is having and she's like, oh no, I've become as stupid as Kylo. <laughs> or this is a light, this is a vision that Kylo is seeing and he's going, when he's like on some sort of redemption arc and is going like, oh no, oh, Ray can I become as stupid, stupid as me. <laughs> I don't want Ray to be that stupid. Or this is her actually going to the dark side and this is a lightsaber that Kylo made for her because it's stupid. (laughs) So, I, yeah, it could be her going to the dark side, which I think would be an would be unexpected for Disney. I don't it would be a tight fit in a movie of this length. It, I doubt it sure they could would do be. it efficiently. It sure would be. Uh, I I don't think it will happen. Yeah. Um. I'm in the Vision camp. I'm in the Vision yeah. camp personally. Although I wouldn't. I mean. It would be cool in one sense for them to flip it and be like, no, this is a falling, like, she just, she goes to the dark side. I think that would be cool just because it would be unexpected. I don't think they'll do that, though. They have established that Rey is rather angry and that she Mm -hmm. is, she does flirt closer to the dark side than Luke is comfortable with. So they're not without at least some precedent for this if they choose to go that direction. But even so, it would be a tight fit to to, to establish sufficient co- character motivation to do that, especially if then they, they then end up redeeming her, <coughs> and it would be a lot like a lot of the extended universe stuff that played ridiculous with falling yeah. to the dark side and coming back to the light. It's like, oh yeah, I fell to the dark side once. That was a bad half hour, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, I don't. I don't think it is. I the vision is easily yeah, the yeah. most likely, and that was what made me coupling that image with. I, I actually liked the the having Luke narrating everything and then suddenly shifting his voice into Palpatine's. That was neat. I I thought that was a pretty cool thing, but doing that on top of this, that I'm like, that is like 95%. That is a vision. And coupling that with Palpatine makes me go, okay, this makes it feel like Palpatine is vision based. This is not, this is not something I'm concerned with. He's a Sith force ghost. The other option that I have not brought up is, this is mirror universe, so we've got evil Ray and good Palpatine. That's why it transitioned from Luke into Palpatine because this is this is good Palpatine from the mirror universe. <laughs> stop it! <laughs> <laughs> you stop it right now. Ross can't handle it. Chris, just, uh, oh man! It's too snarky, Chris. Too snarky. There is no such thing, <laughs> Ross. How dare you? Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh boy. Well, I think that's, oh, there there were a few other little tidbits oh. that I heard mentioned. Uh, the main one for me that I heard that I was like, oh, I, that gets my hopes up. I don't want my hopes up, but I'm yeah, I'm kind of hoping that was they had some little bits of Oscar Isaac's and Carrie Russell 
being interviewed. Yes, the interviews. Well, before we, before we move off the trailer itself, oh, okay, um, cool. I also want to mention the music. Um, I think this oh, yeah. might oh, be yeah. an actual one of the John Williams tracks that I don't think we talked about. They've been talking about how much music he'd already written. Yeah, and, yeah. and he did mention that, that, that this will include music from basically everything that yeah. he's ever done for Star Wars. Because will be in this because movie. this song did that. Yeah. So it did well, a I mean, lot. It, did, it did several. It shifted um, through quite a few. Yeah. 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 So um, I think this might be one of the new tracks, which is a little bit of a departure. I th- and I thought the music did a great job setting the tone for the movie. Yeah. I yeah. mean, if the music in both of these has been now, granted, it's John but... Williams, so you yeah. know <laughs> you're pretty much guaranteed to have some great, <laughs> great music yeah. when he's at the helm. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, the thing that the the main thing that they mentioned in these interviews with Carrie Russell and Oscar Isaacs is that she's an old acquaintance of Oscar Isaacs and that they're hinting at like, oh yeah, you're going to find out that Poe has a bit of a darker background than you might have expected. And I'm just like, okay, so Poe's cash in now? Like, okay, whatever. <laughs> but They're giving Poe backstory? Yeah. yeah. Well, I don't mind him getting backstory, but it was just like, oh, he's a bit darker. And it's like, okay, so he's cash in. Like, are you, how are you going <laughs> to distinguish these two guys? But... Um, aside from the fact that one of them is decidedly sexier than the other. And Cashin's not the pilot. I won't be specify. I won't specify further, but... Cashin, um, Cashin <laughs> has a name. He's not the pilot. Cashin's not the pilot. Come on, it's a joke, Chris. It's a callback joke. He's saying Cassian is <laughs> not I know, but Poe is a pilot, but he's not right. pilot. Cashin <laughs> is not. That's what I'm saying. Is that's yeah, how I know, I know. Um, Fine, Chris. <laughs> just let me have the joke. Ah, uh, <laughs> good job, Bass. Fake laugh. Uh, three, two, one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good one, Ross. Yes. You guys suck. I'm going home. <laughs> oh, wait. <laughs> he, he's kicking us out. Yeah, right. um, but yeah, it, I, the main thing that I, I, my hope that I got from that was that it's like, hey, we're gonna, we're trying to let down the hopes of these people who actually think we're gonna retcon Ray's origin here using Carrie Russell. Yeah. Is like, we're going to let them mention that she's an acquaintance of Poe's, and even for Star Wars, it would be kind of a ridiculous improbability if he just happens to be friends with Ray's mom from way back. Turns out he and Ray are siblings save it for our next improbabilities episode chris yeah (laughs) that was one that i had read that carrie russell was going to be ray's mom and she was going to talk about ray's dad who was named dash seriously some for for those of you that aren't as familiar with the old eu dash is a reference to dash rendar who is the shadows of the empire who is the most superfluous star wars character ever like nobody needs dash rendar anywhere discount han solo yeah and like real discount yeah yeah <laughs> yeah yeah anyway but that I, I i was hopeful that it's like hey we're establishing right now her relation is to poe not to ray i i, I in fact i've even got my yeah. money on she's a first she's like a not even a first act but an opening action sequence character that like we're meeting up with her and it leads to repercussions and we're all running and chasing and exploding and then we get something from her or some information from her whatever and that's it Mm. that is the entirety of carrie russell in the film that is my prediction right now so interesting okay yeah because we haven't seen anything else from her so we are about out of time she is on the promos though she is on the promos either that or she sticks around and then pulls off a mask revealing that she was gwendolyn christie all along it's captain phasma and no that I tried to get Ross out of here on time. That's fine. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Ross needs to get to bed. We need to stop. Oh, That's also, true. the uh, what I did like from another set of those interviews, Chris, was they keep the, the interviewer from Good Morning America kept asking, you know, so what's what's Ray and, and uh, Kylo's relationship? What's happening there? And all the different <laughs> verbs that they were, well, the words that they were yeah. using. One, I think the one from Daisy Ridley was progressing. <laughs> which of course could sent. mean literally anything yeah uh and then i think the other someone else was asked and they said like complicated or something like that or mm. i don't remember i enjoyed wow. i watched a video of predictions from a couple of days ago for by jenny nicholson where she was like oh, i'm gonna do this before d3 i want to do this before we've got anything to base it off of just because i like living my life in hard mode i guess and and what she was like well for my for my bingo spot in the middle i have to have something you know something just that's just an obvious gimme that's non-controversial obviously that's going to be in the movie i will just go with raylo and i was like ah (laughs) that's funny um Uh, another thing i did also want to mention that i forgot there was a uh i don't remember who the outlet was that was talking about the footage in talking about dark ray um in the text of this article had specifically referred to it as a vision of Ray, and then that was later changed. Her. So, may or may not mean anything, but fair enough. 
Yeah. I got to say, part of me is a little nervous about the way the cast and crew and everyone have all been talking about this. Like, oh yeah, you're all going to love this. You're going to love this so much. And I'm like, I know this isn't necessarily what's going on, but this is another of those things that you have to teach new authors not to do with their copy. It's like, no, don't tell people they'll love your stuff because you can't promise that. That's that's a that's a bad move that people do when they what you want to do is tell them what the stuff is so well that they go, well, I'll love that. And if you can't if you're not doing that, it's because you can't. And 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 I was like, that's not what's going on here. But every time I hear someone being like, you're going to love this, I'm always like, "Ah, am uh." I, though? (laughs) Well, then that's the other problem. It's like the problem is one that if you tell them that and then they don't, well, they're never going to trust you again Two, If you can't just show them that they're going to love it, then that shows that you're not that great of a writer. And three, like 75% of the human population's reaction to you telling them you're going to love this is going to be, you can't tell me what to do. <laughs> yeah. You're not my real dad. Yeah. So, <laughs> so every time they do that, I'm always like, ah, ooh, ah, stop, stop, stop saying that. No, ow, ah, that's not good marketing. Yep. But uh, the, the reality is probably just that that's literally all they're allowed to say. Yeah. And they're just like, well, we're just going to keep repeating this because... Disney, I I want to keep my tongue, and I have signed it away. <laughs> Disney, Disney will like, take they will take it away without pinchers. To keep keep my tongue and my potential future employment. Yes. So so, is that it then? I think so. Okay. Well, we hope you enjoyed this episode in where in which we desperately tried to keep it shorter and <laughs> kind of did that. Um, <laughs> it's not our sure worst. <laughs> to follow yeah. us on Twitter at More Civilized and join our Facebook group and More Civilized Podcast, where you can also join in the fun discussions that happen and the excellent memeage that gets thrown around. So, and you can speak with me on Twitter at Mister Underscore R Star. And today, our favorite listener goes to our listener from Pennsylvania at Rural Farm Boy. <laughs> You had a better explanation as to why, oh. so I will let you do that. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, anyway, he, two or three times now, has posted uh, or tweeted uh, out the podcast that he listens to while he is out working, presumably in his rural farm. Um, and we always get mentioned among the several Star Wars podcasts that he listens to, which uh, then blows up our notifications and gets us out there and makes us a little bit more visible. So we wanted to just... You know, give you a pat on the back, rural farm boy, and let you know how much we really do appreciate that. Yeah, mm-hmm. and uh, so thank you, man. And yes, uh, keep keep on keeping on. We get uh, I can now I can always count on Pennsylvania for downloads, and it makes me happy. <laughs> so thank you. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at itinerant Baxter, and check with us on Twitter and Facebook. Let us know if you got any ideas, some stuff you'd like to hear us talk about on this here podcast, and we would love to do so as long as it is at least peripherally Star Wars related. Yep. So thank you all for listening, and may the Force be with you. Always. I'm Anna Graves, and thank you for listening to a more civilized podcast. (laughs) 